Good afternoon, Good Shepherd. It is Cinco de Mayo, 2021, the 5th of May. Um, and as I'm recording this, uh, it's thundering outside. So I hope we're not interrupted by big claps of thunder um, on this, this uh, day of Cinco de Mayo. Um, I have, like all of us, I think, you know, we collect books or other kind of things over the course of years, and we look at them every so often. And I've got on my desk a, a pile of uh, random uh, books um, that have, you know, been given to me and things like that. And I pull them out every so often just to flip through them and see what's in them. And uh, I recently pulled out uh, this book, uh, Kids Random Acts of Kindness. And I don't know how long I've had this book, a long time. And I was just flipping through it and um, I ran across this little story um, that uh, a, a boy named David in the eighth grade wrote down, who knows when, um, but it, it struck me. And it struck me, especially um, given our context, um, some of the lessons that we've been reading um, the last few weeks and coming up, but also stuff that's going on with regard to the church and COVID and reopening and all of those kinds of things. So um, I thought I'd read this little story and then make a few comments um, and move us, move us along. So David writes, two of my friends entered a science fair and both were sure to win. But the night before the judging, one of my friend's projects fell to pieces. The other friend stayed up all night helping to fix it and they actually made it better. Because my friend helped make it better, he lost the competition, but felt good because he had helped someone in need. Um, classic story out of books like this, you know, sort of feel good stories. Uh, they, do, they do make you smile. Well, as we slowly move forward um, out of COVID land, um, it's still a slow process. And so we move with caution. And we move with caution partly because uh, we don't want to win at the expense of someone else. Um, we are in a culture, we are in a society, I guess maybe it's hardwired into us as humans that we want to win. Um, we want to be first, we want to come in number one. And David reminds us that sometimes we have to sort of step back when things are broken and help others put them together. Um, and if we do that, uh, the other person may win, but we'll come out feeling good. And so, again, we keep hearing all sorts of multiple messages um, coming out of, of the government in various ways, in places we hear words from the CDC about uh, being maskless outside um, and uh, whether or not we need to worry about social distancing is unclear. Um, we read or hear uh, words out of the governor's office um, talking about uh, restric restrictions being uh, relaxed. Um, all those kinds of things, they make us think, oh, good, 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 we're almost out of this. We're almost out of this. Um, but, uh, you know, there are hopeful signs. Uh, we are getting there. Uh, the percentage of folks um, who have been vaccinated is going up. But there are other signs as well that say it's, uh, it's not all as uh, positive as, as we might think. And so we have to continue to proceed with caution. Um, at Good Shepherd, um, I think most of you know we're doing everything we can to get everybody back together as quickly as we can, but to do it in a safe way um, uh, for all who are um, interested in being a part of our, our community. And um, some are ready to come back. Um, some are still waiting, some want to come back, but even being outside does not increase their comfort level enough to come back and to worship outside. So we need to be patient. Um, we need to be cautious. Um, we need to keep um, our neighbors, uh, and I'm not talking about the folks at Saddle Ridge, but maybe those two, um, you know, our, our neighbors uh, in mind. Um, and the council from the bishop's office, we just got a new um, report out today, you know, is, has been consistent 
throughout all of this is uh, keep that neighbor first, keep them in mind first. Um, and we aren't out to win the science fair project. And that was a really apt um, uh, image, I think, you know, that we are in some respects in a science fair project. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, our desire to get that blue ribbon, um, I remember very clearly not getting a blue ribbon once, even though I thought my project was really cool. Um, I know what that feels like, um, but we don't want others to um, put in at risk because of our desire to, to have that blue ribbon. So um, we are moving forward as we can, but we're doing so with caution. Um, look forward to seeing you at, a, at an upcoming service outdoors. Uh, we're trying to get indoors as quickly as we can, partly not because we want to be indoors. It's still going to be safer outdoors and we will do that as long as we can, but the weather may begin to get hot. <laughs> <laughs> Being outdoors will be even less comfortable than it was um, last fall when it was in the 30s um, uh, and, uh, you know, cold. But uh, that said, um, we are imagining um, what it's going to be like when we can be back in the building, when um, things begin to feel a little bit less restrictive. But that doesn't mean that the church will go back to being what it was. And I don't mean just Good Shepherd, but I mean the church in general. Um, for 18 months, by the time we sort of get back in, in regular fashion, for 18 months, we will have been the church differently. And um, as I mentioned before, you know, we've got the team, the reimagining team is starting to work um, and the folks will begin to see things coming out from them in the next week or so. Um, and what I'm encouraging you to think about now is what how will we be the church in this new world? How will we be Good Shepherd when Good Shepherd is represented by people in the building and people in Virginia or people in Louisiana or people in Washington State? And we are all Good Shepherd, people who are traveling. How are we all Good Shepherd? Is Good Shepherd just what happens here on Sunday morning, as important as that is? Or is Good Shepherd this community of folk who carry out mission in the world, even though we may meet occasionally on this place? What does that look like? And, and I'm, I'm challenging, I'm really asking you to think through this question because you're gonna see varieties of it coming up as we reimagine what it looks like um, to be Good Shepherd in the latter part of 2021 going into 2022. Um, it's a hopeful time. We can rethink. We can think anew, we can imagine. Um, I've been parts of several conversations over the last uh, several days where reimagining has been kind of fun. Really, we could do that. Oh, what a great idea. You know, I've been hearing that. So we can do that. That has not stopped um, because of COVID. Uh, we can do good mission and ministry out there. So how are we going to be church in this new world? Think about that, um, have conversations about that. Um, if you got ideas, you know, hold them because we will collect all of those and put them to good use. Um, the only other thing I want to say today um, is uh, just to let you know that this coming Sunday and the following Sunday, the 16th, uh, at Faith Forum, we will be talking about um, how do we uh, strive for justice and peace among all peoples and respect the dignity of every human being. Um, the questions will be um, the, the engagement of Bible and newspaper. Um, and how does, that, how does that happen? And for some of us, that's an uncomfortable question to ask. Um, for some of us, it's, it's um, just puzzling. How do we do that? Um, for some of us, we don't know the logistics of how to address these kinds of questions. So um, from a theological standpoint and from a practical standpoint, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to, the advocacy team is going to take over the uh, the faith forum, and we're going to talk about um, what it means to carry our Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other and say that these are both part of how God would have us interact with the world. And the question is, how do we put those together? So I look forward to seeing you on Sunday um, at Zoom, at Faith Forum, or at uh, Outdoor Worship, if the weather holds, <laughs> uh, on Sunday at 1130, um, or at some point in between. Blessings, my friend, this Cinco de Mayo, um, this 5th of May, um, and I look forward to seeing you soon.
Bye-bye.